It's just a uh, hey, Whoever survives it makes it got to it. Find this one. This is all cap. And this is not a spring chicken today. We're gonna do a review for Final Destination Five. In 3D, which yes. basically, you know, okay folks, it's like all 3D productions today. No matter what they tell you, they can bring out a camera that's like this, you know, and they bring out the double cameras. It's all back room. And they're really grumping about this being a backroom movie. Well, it, <laughs> okay, see, part of it is that really shouldn't surprise people. I mean, some of the shots in some of the other movies we've said, seen were they incorporated some 3D shots as well yeah. as some 2D converted to 3D shots. Yeah, a, but, you know, okay. a true. We're gonna try it again. A true D, a true 3D movie cannot zoom. You can move a camera in and out on a rail system. The camera itself does not, that's your tip off, that it's basically not a real 3D camera. It's, a, it's software, because a 3D camera is a fixed everything. We've done it before, i show it again. Then walk forward towards the camera, and you know, no matter how far she moves forward or back where she's in focus, that is 3D. This is a true 3D camera. You just camera. be shallow depth of focus. Yeah. But you're still in focus. If you walk right up on top of the camera, everything is going to be totally in focus with a true 3D camera. Like, you know, and a true 3D camera is a fixed, uh, the, the, the lens is fixed. So when you can go in and out on a rail system, which is what they use, you know, they have a rail like this, the camera goes like this and comes back. But everything within the frames, that's called in France, it's called the mesel scene. Is still in focus. When it's out of focus, you know it's a backroom shot. Well, you know, I love the Final Destination franchise because wasn't it just the other day that wasn't the last Final Destination in 3D on TV? On, TV. on a non 3D channel. On a non 3D channel. And if you put your 3D glasses on, which we have a large variety of 3D glasses, uh, it, you know, the Anaglyph really looked pretty good on it, but the real TV looked good. The Harry Potters looked well. She's got the. Uh, the Marchands, which I don't have, but I've got I've got like six other types. So, but it um, it looked really it made it, I I I've got okay. See this one. This has a 3D player on it. Mm -hmm. So it can it shows 3D movies and anaglyph and it shows it also in three other forms interlay side by side top and bottom. But the the main complaint that most of the people are having is the same complaint they have. They really don't like back into 3D. They said, uh, like the reviewer said, it, the other reviewers have said, it destroys, it, told, it, des it hurt the franchise greatly. Well, it's got to bring in extra bucks. <laughs> and if you look carefully, um, three out of the four billion dollar making movies this summer were 3D pictures. Mm -hmm. And it makes a difference. And 3D is bigger out of the United States than it is, which is why our box office is not that hot in this country at the moment compared to the other countries because they love 3D out of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, here, here, here you've got the same people uh, like when I was little, uh, you know, we're never going to get color. Just, just no one's going to want to pay to see color. No one's going to want to see stereophonic sound. No one's going to pay to see technicolor. No one's going to pay to see widescreen. No one's going to pay 75 millimeter. No one's going to pay to see digital. Well, Every theater out there is digital now, basically. We sit there and go to the movies and sit there and watch the background. They got anamorphic lenses on virtually every one of the screens, and they basically have a computer now programming stuff. So it just changes the lens aperture. So sometimes they forget to push the, the, the 2D button when they're showing a 3D commercial. But, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but basically, the premise of this stupid thing is that, you know, it, it goes back. Um, I worked on a project like this um, nearly 60 years ago, and the project was the, the people had an a train accident, everyone should have been killed. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, it's just like this one was one of these things, they stepped through a t piece of tile, but the problem is time caught up with each one of them one by one, and they all died in strange methods to make up for the fact that they should have died. This, this, part, this goes back to clean, I think, Frederick March. And, um, and uh, Lionel Barrymore, death takes a holiday. Mm -hmm. All these people live, were supposed to have died, and then when they come time to die, they're dying. And the they're dying anyway, but, uh, you know, I almost think some of the new ways they die are much more um, 
dramatic. Okay, uh, they're basically, um, like people said, well, you couldn't have done this back in the old days because of the, of the motion picture code. Well, after the Hayes office, you could do almost anything. They had underground movies. They used to call them real underground movies. They basically slasher flicks, you know, 70 years ago, 60 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago. They've always had them, but they called them underground. Now the underground is now mainstream. Mm -hmm. So what it is is they, um, you know. It, you know, and part of it is you can say they, they take advantage of their fears. Yeah. You know. Did you, um, Rod? They learn they can't cheat death. Uh, I think uh, Rod Sterling episode, which I worked on, I think, called They Shot an Arrow into the Sky. Yeah. And um, it had Rod Taylor and it had um, Jim Hutton and a whole bunch of, you know, a few other people, well known people to date. Basically, it did with the people, they all were killed. And mm -hmm. they're all, they're the uh, spaceship crashed. They all died. And the problem was is that um, uh, they didn't know they were dead. And they just refused to give up the fact that they were dead. Even though the ship crashed, they were dead. You know, one of the things about this movie, this is the fifth in a series. Yeah. And what they said is that if you like Final Destination 1 through 4, you're going to like 5. It's the same thing as the Mila Jolovich Resident Evil things. It has a built-in. They know exactly how much money the movie is going to make. And they don't spend any more than they know it's going to make because... It's got it, a built-in audience. It, it's back-ended. But, you know, here's one of the things is, you know, like when they did Harry Potter, the, the last one, the Deathly Hallows 1 and 2, um, if you had not seen Deathly Hallows 1, when you did Deathly Hallows 2, you would be kind of lost. You're lost. I mean, this one, you even have... though if you didn't see the other four, you're not, like, lost like that one. Because this one, you know, like on a TV show, they kind of show you what happened the last time, so you can kind of catch up or have some idea what's going yeah. on. Well, you were totally kind this of lost. One, this one laps over from the last one. It's basically like this. So, you know, you know first of all, if, if you, like I said, like you said, if you've never seen the franchise, there's still something in there. Mm -hmm. Because you, uh, can, you can still watch it, you won't be totally lost. You may not get as many of the, uh, yeah, and, as much of the uh, humor. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, it's funny is that we've actually yet we've actually talked to Nicholas Diacristo before. On he's a really a nice guy. I know, and you might have seen him in what was the show uh, the fire, Heroes? Yeah, and or fired up. Fired up with Eric Christian Olsen from NCIS LA. He's really a nice young guy. He's those, awesome. those two are the two leads on that. But he's an overachiever. He does everything so. But he's, you know, like they make fun. We saw him. They were really, the other guys from the thing. I think were making fun of him that night on the line. So, but, oh. uh, but um, the 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 premise remains totally the same. You know, it's just it, it, if you keep it exactly simple, it's just like I could tell when the girl was going to get completely naked in the uh, in the Friday the Thirteenth movies because you'd go, she's going to get naked. Another one's got to get naked. Okay, uh, he's going to kill. Okay, they're getting ready to have. They're getting ready to have sex. He one of them. You can get tell killed. by the music. The you can tell by the music, but you know from where it takes. You know that it's gone. The beat is the same. It's just like you go. Mm -hmm. When it can, you know, from the cadence of the movie, and you see the other four, you know exactly where people are going to get axed because it's the same script with different actors. <laughs> and, um, um, okay. We'll try to put it in another method. I, I, I did work when I was younger on Bonanza and on, on the High Chaparral and over on Maverick and Cheyenne. And they, they uh, I remember Michael Landon saying, we've got six scripts on Bonanza. And, you know, uh, you know, they're going to take over the ranch. Paul's in trouble. Horse is in trouble. Adam's in trouble. I'm in trouble. One of us gets married and, and, that, and the woman meets a terrible fate. And they just, they had the same storyline and they just put new characters in. It's the same thing here. You know that they're going to get some gruesome way of being killed. Yeah, but see, part of it is this time they're trying to amplify it, ramp it up just a little bit for the audience to see. And you know what's different about this one than the other ones? Is the other one is like, okay, you can't cheat death, so you know they're going to die. Yeah. This one is... Um, the a little twist is some of them kind of figure out a way that they think they can survive. Can, they think they can Ooh. survive. They basically, they figure out, okay, uh, if somebody else dies in my place. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's why you see those commercials where it's like they're, they're sitting there contemplating, well, let's kill this person so I can survive. Yeah, and, and we're not giving a whole lot of secrets away on this stupid thing because it's... It was in the commercial! 
She's in a commercial. You see it on the, on the TV set. They don't want to die. We know we should have been killed. There's no way on earth that, but that happens. Um, um, the guy, I think my father, and my father in World War II, a man parachuted from like 20,000 feet in the air, which is god awful way up from a from a, from a bomber, and he crashed through um, a, a greenhouse and didn't get a single cut on him. You know, his parachute didn't open, crashed through a greenhouse, and he said it's impossible. You know, MythBuster, they did a thing on it. It's impossible. He did it though. Yeah. It happens. People, um, I guarantee you. Okay, most people that I know know that I fell off when I was a little one, which is why I, I, I always wanted to be six foot and could make it. When I was a little one, my mother accidentally dropped me from the top of the power and light building. Yeah, accidentally dropped you. Yeah. Well, she did run down all the 30-some stories and put her arms out to catch me. And then as soon as I got near her, she went like this, and all the mothers applied. No. Nah. You mean that didn't happen? No. I hit the ground. I did a lot of damage. But it didn't kill me. I hit the ground feet first. It gave me flat feet, bad ankles, bad knees, and, and bad hips. But um, well, yeah, I he, still did it. Yeah. But I was also born premature. I was born in my, my first bed was a shoebox. I shouldn't have lived. You know, I'm, tr I'm sitting there thinking about this. Did the other Final Destination movies come out during the summer, or did they come out for Halloween? They come out, um, they come out when they think the box office is going to be the weakest. Well. Here's part of it is, is since there's two movies that I thought were done earlier, which was Hugh Jackman's movie, yeah, right? And they, then they um, moved it back. They moved it back. What was the second movie they moved back that we were looking for? Um, uh, and, and, there was a second movie that they moved back till September. So part of it is, as far as timing, there's not a lot of big blockbuster movies that are no, coming they out. basically the ma there's abandoned. What? August, which is why Disney took a gamble. Disney has got help, which I don't want to go see. I mean, I got we could have done that. Well, you know, I'm really good, just surprised because the help is coming out like the same time as this. I'm, and I would think it's a different audience. Is it told, okay, this is a built-in audience. This, audience. Well. this will do. For, uh, this one will do um, 60, 70 million dollars. But you know what? I think this one might do better. I mean, even though they have competition from The Help this weekend... The Help is a different audience, and nobody liked actually. Planets was basically... And I'm actually really kind of surprised it's already had as many views as it has from the midnight showings. Yeah, they got... <laughs> uh, Help picked up $5 million yesterday. $5 million, which basically... Which actually is pretty surprising. They put it in the category of... Um, Harry Potter. Of Harry Potter sure. and the Pirates movies. None of the others have done that good, but it... Which means it's going to, if you figure it logically, it'll probably make 30, 40 million dollars at least. For the weekend. For the weekend. It's a movie, it's a it's a it's an awards movie. It's the movies you bring out in the fall of the year when they're when they're wanting to get Academy Award consideration. Yeah, actually we were really surprised it was brought out at this time. But this movie, because the other movies have been postponed. There's not as many, so I actually think this Final Destination actually be could do better, better than the other ones because of lack of competition at the box office. I know. Because otherwise, what? Oh, there's Planet of the Apes, which was last week. Yeah. Which has a somewhat built-in audience, although, you know, since they've changed it so much, sometimes it gets people upset. This one follows kind of along with the other one, so this built-in audience, I think, will be a lot more satisfied than the Planet of the Apes audience. Yeah, but uh, okay. But here's this. We're gonna try this. I love you know. Gonna try to explain this is that okay? So it's it's already basically it is in release when you see this thing too. Mm -hmm. But basically, we're talking the company retreat method of dispatching people in horror movies now, which is a good one. That that they're going in a company retreat and they they go they get on a bridge. This is bridge and everybody. Here's the thing is. Uh, you got to do what you have to do to survive, but naturally, no one does what they have to do to survive, and they all survive. How does that happen? Which means you get the hell off the bus before the bridge. Well, that's what the <laughs> You know, okay, here's a good one. You know the train is speeding to a crash. Oh, my God. What do I do? If I jump, I might get hurt. If you stay on the train, you're going to get killed. <laughs> go jump. You pick yourself out a nice area and go, whee! And then, um... It's just like, um, I, I, you know, I, I know a gentleman, a, a naval officer, that basically, uh, they, he, he was flying Rio, 
and his, his ejection seat didn't work. And he, he, he the, co the pilot said, you know, well, you're going to have to ride it in because your ejection seat doesn't work. And he said, let's see, our landing gear shot all the hill, right? And he said, yes. And he said, our hook is no longer exists. And he said, right. We're on fire, right? And he said, I think I'm crawling out of this plane. <laughs> yeah. And what he did, guess who survived? Yeah. The guy that rode the plane in or the guy that was in the real position was his back seat and basically was too low to parachute. He, would, he was more happy with that parachute opening for about a few seconds than he was hitting the deck of an aircraft carrier and going boom. Mm. That's what you do call doing it right. But, um, but you know, one of the things in this movie that's kind of unique is usually you can tell when somebody's going to get killed. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you no. can tell by the music, you can tell by the. It's like the sharks. The jaws, dum dum, dum dum, dum dum. Down. You see it's happening, you're just waiting for that. Okay. I, 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 I go back to the era when there would be boom 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 and when the heart would stop beating or the drum. Uh -huh. Which is why women, if you go with a female, they know when to hide their heads yeah. for the, the gross parts. Yeah, same with that. But they, 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 well, here's the particular thing. This time they kept the premonitions of death. They did it straight because they got a different set of actors. Which is funny, the actors are getting better and the movies are getting worse. Well, because basically, okay, what do I have to do? Well, you have to do everything wrong and you die as a result of it and you get paid for doing it. And then it makes lots of money in ancillary sales, which means if you have a back-end profit thing, you don't have to worry about we're making your house payment next year. Oh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But they're guaranteed money machines. This is a money machine. It's not... Um, part of, here's part of it is when you have a franchise that's been successful, just like on um, the one with Mila Jovovich, it's like, it's hard... Uh, 